Hello Matrix and welcome to the seventh video on statistics brought to you by the answer series. In this video we will look at some typical exam questions. Example number one. I want you to pause the video. I want you to try this and then we will do it together. To calculate the mean profit I take the values I add them all together and divide by 12 because there are 12 numbers there and I get the mean. Notice the monthly profit is in thousands of rands so I need to take the mean and multiply it by a thousand. They then ask me for the median. I have 12 values so the median lies between the sixth and the seventh value. So I add those two together and divide by 2. Do not forget again to multiply by a thousand. 1.2 asks you to draw the box and whisker diagram. You have the smallest value. You have the largest value. The median you have already worked out. To calculate the lower quartile, you take the data that is below the median and you find the median of that data. So halfway between 156 and 164, add them together, divide by 2, and there's your lower quartile. To get the upper quartile, you take the data that is above the median and you get the median of that data. So halfway between these two values, add the two, divide by two, and there is your upper quartile. So now you plot on the number line your minimum value, lower quartile, median, upper quartile, and maximum value, and draw your box and whisker diagram. 1.3 asks you for the interquartile range. The interquartile range is the upper quartile minus the lower quartile and don't forget to multiply by a thousand. 1.4 asks you for skewness. You will notice that the data is far more spread out to the right, which means the data is skewed to the right. 1.5 says calculate the standard deviation. You get that off your calculator as was explained in a previous video and then multiply by a thousand. 1.5.2 asks you to determine the number of months in which the profit was less than one standard deviation below the mean. So I take the mean which you've calculated minus the standard deviation which you also have and I get my answer. Where does that fit into my data? It fits between these two values. So how many entries do I have less than that? I have two. Example number two. I want you to pause the video. I want you to try this yourself and then we will do it together. Two point one asks you for the range of the marks in the physical sciences examination. So I take the maximum value minus the minimum value. They then ask me to draw a box and whisker diagram for the mathematics results. So what I have is the following. The minimum mark is 30, so I can plot that. They tell me that the range is 55. So that means that from the minimum value to the maximum value is 55. So I can get that the maximum value is 85. The upper quartile is 70 so I can enter that. They then tell me that the interquartile range is 30. Now your interquartile range is the upper quartile minus the lower quartile. So 70 minus what is 30? So that's where I get the lower quartile being 40. And then they gave me that the median is 55. And so I draw the box and whisker diagram for the mathematics results. The next question is how many learners scored less than 70% in the mathematics exam? 
So there's my 70%. How many learners scored less than that? Now, you know in your box and whisker diagram that it's divided into four quartiles. 25% of the data fits here. 25% here, 25% here, 25% here. So what percentage is less than 70%? 75% of my data lies there because there are three quartiles. And 75% of 60 pupils is 45. They then say to you, with physical sciences, from 30 to 45, and with mathematics from 30 to 55 and Joe claims that the number of learners in physical science is smaller than the number of learners in mathematics. Now that distance is smaller than that distance but remember in a box and whisker diagram 25% of your data lies in each quartile so that is 50% of my data. Here is also 50%. In other words, his claim is not valid because each group has 50% of the learners. Example number three. I want you to pause the video. I want you to try this yourself and then we will do it together. The first question is to write down the modal class. So I take the one that has the highest frequency and it is 80 to 100. They then ask me to complete the cumulative frequency column. Remember that that frequency is just repeated there. I then take 7 plus 6 and I get 13. 13 plus 8 and I get 21 and so on. And remember the total of all the frequencies must be the final number you get. They ask me to draw an ogive and when you draw an ogive you take the highest value so I plot 47 which is there 60 13 all the way up to 120 35 remember I ground it to the lowest value and I draw a curve. 3.4 A salesman receives a bonus if his commission is more than 90,000 Rand. So go up from 90,000 Rand to the ogive and go across and you will notice you get approximately 26. Now the people who get more than 90,000 is this lot here. How many are there? Well, they're 35 in total, minus the 26 that we've read off. In other words, there are nine salesmen. Three point five asks you to determine the approximate mean commission. Remember to get the mean from group data. You take the midpoint of each interval. So the midpoint of 20 to 40 is 30. The midpoint is 50 and so on. I then take the frequency times the midpoint, the frequency times the midpoint and I get all of those. There are 35 in total so I divide by 35 and again this question was in thousands of rands and they wanted it to the nearest thousand rand. So I multiply this by a thousand and I round it off to the nearest thousand. Example number four. I want you to pause the video. I want you to try this yourself and then we will do it together. 4.1. They want the average number of runs. Add all the values and divide by eight and you get your mean. The standard deviation, you get off your calculator. So enter all those values, use the steps that we showed in a previous video, and write down the standard deviation. Four point three, they've given you the next 
three scores that he gave. And they said, describe the effect of his performance on the standard deviation. Now, you can do it in two ways. You can either work out the new standard deviation, so you add these three values to the previous data set and work it out. Or you can look at it and say the following. 35 and 2 is quite far spread from the other data. Now remember your standard deviation gives you an indication of how the data is spread. So if I add two more values that are more spread than the previous data, it will make my standard deviation bigger because the data will be more spread. 4.4 says Abe hopes to score an average of 20 runs in the first 16 games. The first eight games added up to 128, add the next three games, and he's got a total of 187 runs. If he wants an average of 20 in 16 games, it means that his runs must add up to 320. He's got 187, he wants 320. So he needs to score an extra 133 runs in the next five games, which means the average he needs for the next five games is 26.6. .6. You should now have an idea of some typical exam questions. Thank you for watching this video. Check out the video description below for practice questions from our study guides. If you found this video useful, give it a like and subscribe to our channel so you don't miss any new episodes. Follow us on Instagram or Facebook to stay on top of the latest TAS news and launches. So that's it for now from The Answer Series, your key to exam success.